Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everyone. Welcome back to the first shorts where we are covering some of the early biographies in Islam that only have a paragraph or two about them, but we want to relive their memory and revive their memory, inshallah ta'ala. And the person we are speaking about today is Atika bint Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufayl. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her and her father. Allahumma ameen. And before I talk about her and what she encountered in this life, I want to talk about the name Atika because I know that a lot of people like to take these names and inshallah ta'ala consider them for names of their children uh, as this is a tradition that we have in our sunnah from the Prophet Sallallahu to give good names and to consider the names of the Sahaba. Atika is an interesting uh, name. It technically means a person who puts on a lot of perfume and there are other usages uh, for it. And it was a common uh, name for women at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there's a narration when the Prophet ﷺ was in Hunayn that the Prophet ﷺ says, "Ana ibn al-Awatika min Sulaym." I am the son of the Awatik, meaning the Atikas, the plural of women named Atika. I am the son of the Awatik. And in one narration, the Prophet ﷺ says, "Wa ibn al-Fawatima min Quraysh," and the son of the Fatimas of Quraysh. So I am the son of the Atikas from Sulaym and from the Fatimas of Quraysh. And that is because when you look at the lineage of the Prophet wasallam, there were so many women named Atika. So you have Atika, the mother of Abdi Manaf, Atika, the mother of Hashim, Atika, his grandmother وسلم, from Banu Zuhra. So this is a name that was quite common amongst the Arabs at the time. And here you have Atika bint Zayd radiallahu ta'ala anhum. And when we talk about Atika bint Zayd, I want you to go way back to probably one of the most definitive stories in the firsts. And that is the man who embraced the way of Ibrahim alayhi salam and the man who lived in accordance with the way of Ibrahim alayhi salam before it was formalized through the revelation to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The man who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said will stand on the day of judgment as an ummah by himself with two gardens, Zayd radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Ibn Amr ibn Nufayl. And Zayd radiallahu ta'ala anhu, you know, uh, we covered him in detail, then we covered his desire for his son to be a companion of the Prophet wasallam, And that, of course, was Sa'id ibn Zayd. So when Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufayl passed away, remember, this was a man who was removed from the ways of ignorance, who, you know, gave his kids the best tarbiyah, the best mentorship, the best guide. And that is that he would not only reject idol worship at his time, but he rejected alcohol. He rejected the burial of young daughters at the time. And he would take those girls that were to be buried in female infanticide and he'd bring them into his own home radiallahu anhu and raise them to a point where they could get married instead. And with Zayd radiallahu anhu, he leaves behind only two children. And that is Sa'id ibn Zayd, who we have already covered extensively. May Allah be pleased with him, who of course is one of the 10 promised paradise. And this noble woman, Atika radiallahu ta'ala anha. Now, when we talk about Atika, she is known for a few things. She's known for her beauty. She's known for being an exceedingly beautiful woman. She's known for being an exceedingly eloquent woman. So she was a poet. And this is where you see her, you know, her biography is full of poetry, uh, lamenting the situation that she was put in in, in, in multiple uh, cases. She was known for her religion, her worship, her ibadah, as Ibn Kathir rahimullah, narrates that she was a woman of great ibadah, great devotion. She was known for a complete character, just a, a beautiful, well-rounded character as well. So she's everything that you could want in a woman, and she is everything that you could aspire to as a human being, right? I mean, she has character, she has religion, she has devotion, she's intelligent, she's wise, she has all of these things, radiallahu ta'ala anha. And so when we start to get to her story, we find that the first person that she married is Abdullah ibn Abi Bakr as-Siddiq, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. Now, I can't tell you how many times I've been corrected in a lecture uh, when I say Abdullah ibn Abi Bakr, and they say, are you sure? Do you mean Abdullah ibn Umar? No, I mean Abdullah ibn Abi Bakr, uh, who is a son of Abu Bakr, who is not well known, but he did play a role in Islam, okay? And in fact, he played a role in the Hijrah. If you remember when we spoke about Asma bint Abi Bakr, radiallahu ta'ala anha, she was the one who would bring the food and the drink to the Prophet and Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, as they were on their way to Al-Madinah. 
it was her brother, Abdullah, who was the one that would, you know, hear the news of Mecca and then relay it to the Prophet Sallallahu and Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu on their way. So Abdullah bin Abi Bakr is also one of the first Muslims, but he was very young at the time, okay? So Abdullah is the first husband of Atika bint Zayd. And the story of Abdullah and Atika is that Abdullah fell madly in love with her to a point that he held back from doing any good deeds because he just wanted to be with his wife. That's not a bad thing altogether, right? But it was excessive. It was excessive to the point that he, you know, is holding back from serving alongside the Prophet Sallallahu He's holding back from the masjid. He's virtually unseen in the community. So the honeymoon phase was going way too long. And uh, because of how madly in love he was, and how he was holding back. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu wanted his family to be a family of service. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu eventually pushed him to divorce her. And I want to make a serious disclaimer here that those of you that are parents, in-laws, you are not Abu Bakr. This is a very unique situation. You are not Abu Bakr, nor is your son Abdullah. This is a very different scenario, a very different situation. We don't extract from this that anyone can force uh, their children to get divorced or things of that sort. This is a very unique situation where Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, saw that this was an unhealthy attachment that he had. And this was to teach him a, you know, a, a, a sense of detachment from dunya and attachment to uh, the deen. When that happened, uh, when Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu told him uh, that he should part ways because his, his attachment is too much, he authors this poem. And so you have all of this love poetry. He says, أعاتك لا أنساك ما ذر شارق وما لاح نجم في السماء محلق أوعاتك and I have to paraphrase but he says I will never forget you so long as anything appears in the sky during the day meaning the sun rises or any uh, or any star or any bird flies through the sky at night I will never forget you day or night I will always think about you أوعاتك لها خلق جزل ورأي ومنصب and he, he praises her akhlaq, her character. He praises her intelligence. He praises her status, her, her, her nobility, right? So he says she's a woman of character, a woman of intelligence, a woman of character. And I don't see that someone like me would divorce someone like her uh, on any day. And I don't see that her, that she would be divorced in anything, that she would be uh, uh, parted from in any situation, right? So subhanAllah, it's this, this serious love poetry, the serious attachment that he has. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says, go ahead, take her back. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to keep you away. I'm not going to break your heart. But he wanted him to be more active and more involved in the service that was expected of the family of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And indeed, uh, Abdullah uh, would serve and it was in the uh, siege of Ta'if Later on, that Abdullah ibn Abi Bakr, uh, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, was struck by an arrow. And that arrow eventually took his life and he passed away, uh, you know, sometime after in Al Madinah due to that arrow uh, striking him, radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa an abi. So, also one of the first. When he passed away, so he was martyred, he's a shaheed. Atika also loved him dearly. So she said, I promise, I take an oath that my eyes will never stop crying for you. And that my skin will never touch, and my skin will always remain in dust, meaning it'll never touch any sweet scents, it will never touch other than you. So basically, I'm going to spend the rest of my life mourning you. Okay. And subhanAllah, he passes away. And sometime after that, uh, Zayd ibn al Khattab. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Zayd being the brother of Umar and the brother of Fatima bint al Khattab. Now, think about the tree for a moment, okay? Al Khattab was the one who persecuted Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufayl to the point that Zayd radiallahu anhu could not be in Mecca anymore because of the persecution he faced at the hands of Al Khattab. When he would call to monotheism, Al Khattab would beat him and would persecute him. Now you have Sa'id, the son of Zayd who is married to who? Fatima bint al-Khattab. Fatima being the famous sister of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa anha, who of course 
uh, you know, was was instrumental to his initial embracing of Islam, and we spoke about her. So now Zayd ibn al-Khattab at some point uh, marries her, and then Zayd ibn al-Khattab passes away as a shaheed in what? In al-Yamama. Remember Umar radiallahu anhu said that you preceded me to Islam and you preceded me to martyrdom as well. So both Fatima and Zayd, the, the brother and sister of uh, Umar radiallahu anhu, wa anhum became Muslim uh, before him, and here you have Zayd passing away. So now she's been married to Abdullah bin Abi Bakr. She has been married to Zayd ibn al-Khattab. She's once again taking an oath that she will not get married. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu says to her, do not make haram for yourself what Allah has made halal. Remember, widows in particular, especially the widows of shuhada, the widows of martyrs, would get married multiple times. And this is something that we've already covered multiple times with people like Asma' bint Abi Umais uh, radiallahu ta'ala anha who married Ja'far and then Abu Bakr and then Ali. So here you have Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu who is proposing to the widow of uh, her brother. And she is, uh, you know, in a situation where, you know, she she's unsure about her oath, but she doesn't want to turn down a person like Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So Aisha radiallahu anha comes to her on her wedding night and reminds her of the poem that she once said about Abdullah, who's the brother of Aisha, right? Reminds her of the poem and changes the words for her, okay? And says, آليتُ لا تنفكُ عيني قريرةٌ عليك ولا ينفكُ جلدي أصفرا That I have taken an oath, I have promised that my eye will rest after you, that, that, that it'll be pleased, that, uh, you know, that, that I will uh, be able to get there. And instead of aghbara, uh, that my skin will never touch dust, asfara is a very particular type of uh, yellow uh, perfume. And so there's some wisdom in that, that basically she's saying, look, you have a way out. This was an oath that you didn't have to take upon yourself and uh, that it's okay to be married uh, once again. So here she was now Atika uh, bint Zayd ibn Amr ibn Ufayl. She has married now Abdullah, the son of Abu Bakr. She has married Zayd ibn Khattab and she has married Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu as well. So I just want you to think about this for a moment. Uh, Al-Khattab, uh, to both of his sons, okay, both of his sons, marry the daughter of Zayd. And his uh, his daughter, Fatima bint al-Khattab, marries the son of Zayd, right? So Sa'id bin Zayd and, uh, and here Atika bin Zayd, both of them will be married to the children of al-Khattab. And in the case of Atika, two sons of Al-Khattab, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Zayd radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And that just shows you the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Al-Khattab wanted to prohibit the spread of Iman, to prohibit the spread of faith through the preaching of Zayd radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And instead, what ended up happening? His own children, subhanAllah, would be a part of bearing the seed and the fruit of Iman for generations to come after him. So here you have now Atika married to Umar, there are multiple stories, obviously, of her being married to Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu that we spoke about. Some of them of how Umar radiallahu anhu feared the preference to his family and some of the goods that would come to his home and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu not wanting his family uh, to in any way benefit from his position as the Khalifa of the Muslims. You also find that Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was, uh, was jealous of her going out to the masjid, but he didn't prohibit her because the Prophet prohibited that the women be prohibited from the masjid. And so Atika was someone who insisted on going to the masjid in the evenings on a regular basis. Then Umar radiallahu anhu was killed. Okay, so she has now lived to see three of her husbands become shuhada. Abdullah bin Abi Bakr, shaheed. Zayd bin Khattab, shaheed. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, shaheed. And she cried and she authored poetry about, uh, about Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu as well. SubhanAllah, at this point, I mean, who else is going to marry you, right? I mean, you've been married to those three people. Who comes next? Az-Zubayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. One of the Ashar Mubashireen, one of the 10 promised paradise. And if you go back to the personality of Az-Zubayr and his stature, and you compare it to Umar radiallahu anhu, his stature and his personality, they were very similar. Az-Zubayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu was also a huge man, grew up under very rough circumstances, and had a very similar personality to Umar radiallahu anhu and shared with him in being from Al-Ashar Al-Mubashireen, being from the 10 that were promised paradise. So Zubayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu marries Atika radiallahu anha as well. And then Zubayr radiallahu anhu is martyred 
in the Battle of Al-Jamal. Okay, actually he left the battlefield and if you go back and you you uh, watch the biography of Az-Zubayr anhu, that he was killed in his salah um, and, and martyred in his salah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So now she has married Abdullah bin Abi Bakr, she has married Zayd ibn al-Khattab, she has married Umar ibn al-Khattab, she has married Az-Zubayr radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in and they all died as shuhada. They all died as shuhada. So you have to imagine then what people are saying. Did they attach a bad omen to her? Did they say, okay, don't touch her. Number one, she's been a widow four times now. Number two, everyone that marries her seems to die. No, they actually said, "Man arad shahada atika." If a person wants to be a shaheed, let them marry atika, because that's clearly the trajectory here that Allah has given shahada to every single person that she was married to. So Subhanallah, who is the last person she got married again? Who is the fifth husband of atika? None other than Al Hussein radiAllahu taala anhu. Subhanallah whose martyrdom, whose shahada is one of the most tragic in history, but of course, at the same time, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the ways that a person leaves this earth while they are pleased, Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, of course, left this earth in a way that he is, ple- he is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and may Allah be pleased with him. But she did not live to see al Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu martyred, rather she died before al Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So all five of this woman's husbands, subhanAllah, were shuhada, and they were considered from the greatest of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most beloved people uh, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She lived her life about 72 years and uh, passed away uh, in the Khilafah of Muawiyah. And she was known for her eloquence. She was known for her poetry. She was known for her knowledge. She was known for her ibadah. She was known for her character. And this is a woman radiallahu ta'ala anha that you can imagine SubhanAllah what passed through her home um, was was truly uh, precious. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her and on her father who subhanAllah wanted to see his children become companions and wanted to see the seed of Islam thrive. And look what came through his offspring radiallahu ta'ala anhu in both Sa'id ibn Zayd and in Atika. May Allah be pleased with them all. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khayran. Inshallah ta'ala. We'll see you next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.